Welcome back. This is wealth principle number 15, leverage the law of reciprocity. Hands to the camera if you have heard that it's good to give and it's good to receive. Hands to the camera if you've heard that you have to give to receive. Excellent, excellent. A little, a little mixed on that one. So the, the law of reciprocity states that give and you shall receive. There's another golden rule out there. Do unto others as you would like others to do unto you. Who's heard that one? That's a little more popular. Excellent. So the law of reciprocity leverages, leverages the golden rule. And it's all across business. It's in every business you've ever been in. Hands to the camera if you're a real estate investor. Yes. Yes. Hands to the camera if you own a business. Excellent. Excellent. So the law of reciprocity works in all aspects of life. Hands to the camera if you have a spouse or significant other. Excellent. Hands to the camera if you got kids. Now, this is a weird one, but I got to ask. Hands to the camera if you got parents. Everybody on here's got parents? Excellent. Like alive <laughs> or what? No, no, just parents in general. If they had parents right. at some point. So parents are the perfect example of the law of reciprocity. Parents do so much work while they're alive, while you're beginning life. They put in so much work and they receive absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing except for the most valuable asset on the planet. They receive un, un, unchanging love. There's, there's this love that comes from a child that is completely completely unstoppable. It doesn't matter what the parent does. They still love you. Hence the camera if you experience that. Even if the parent was like completely terrible, children still have this loyalty to their parents. It's a love. And so the law of reciprocity is based in love. It's based in a unique, deep down, powerful law of the universe. Now, knowing that it's as powerful, the most powerful connection on the planet is parent and child, right? We've heard the mother's love is undying. Like, like mothers will do some crazy stuff for their children and children will hurt with the deepest pain possible if their parents are not there in the room. Who's, who's heard a child cry because their parents weren't there? Yes, have you been that child? <laughs> At some point we all have. And so that, that connection that human beings have is because of the giving that was put up front. Now, why does the parent give without ever having any reason to give to the child? Responsibility. There's, there's this deep inside of us, there's this deep need to provide and take care of others that are not capable of taking care of themselves. Inside every one of us, there is this deep law, a universal law that says we must take care of those who are weaker, those who are in a dangerous position, those who have less. There's something inside the universe that is already out there. You already experience it on your daily. Hence the camera if you recognize this, that this law exists. Excellent. So we understand it's a powerful law. But understanding the power of something is not the same as being able to use it. Hence the camera if you've noticed that. We've all said knowledge is power. Real estate's the best way to invest. You can become a millionaire through real estate. Building a business makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of money in all of these things. We understand that love is the law of the universe. And yet every single day we're making mistakes. Every single day goes by and we're not doing the right things to leverage the law of reciprocity. So reciprocity comes from not just the act of giving. It's not just the act of giving money or a gift. Reciprocity can be in the form of a smile. If you give a smile, people are more likely to smile back. Let's, let's practice smiling real quick. Just throw a smile out there on the camera. There it is, some beautiful smiles. Now, the more you smile, the more smiles you receive. It's not a mistake. That's not an accident of the universe. You see, if you make a decision to give something, other people are compelled to give back because the other people in their life, the other people in their life have done that their entire, their entire existence. Right? If you smiled at your child, will they not smile back? They can't help it. You smile at your spouse, even in the middle of an argument. I've done this with Darina many times. We're in the middle of an argument. I just start smiling and she's like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> it's uncontrollable. You can't stop. 
So you, <laughs> pro tip, you want to fight, stop a fight real quick? Just smile. Just realize that none of that is actually important. They're right. You, they win. Move on to the next thing. With the law of reciprocity. really weird when that happens. Right? <laughs> Smile in a hug always makes a conversation go the other way. Well, the hug, if they're not a C, if they're a high C personality, which by the way, me and Darina both, when we get into a frustrated situation, she goes C, I go D. Hugging does not work for us. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the I'm smile always that, works. If you hug a D when they're pissed off, <laughs> a good idea. It just doesn't work. It's not the right way to go. That, that, that okay. escalates I it. Made a good point. It's like TNT. I got that's, it. That's right. Escalates that's right. the fight. Exactly. So we want to be very careful when we're giving uh, advice. The smile goes a long way across all different disc profiles. The hug that takes some time to get to. That means everything is clean. Everything is. Everybody's back to a normal state. Now, the reason I bring up the smile is because it's free. But I guarantee you, if you smile to a stranger enough times, it'll start a conversation. Has anybody ever done that? Yes, experimented with it. You smile, smile in the hallways, smile on the street, smile in the store, smile wherever you are. And eventually, if somebody sees you smile with them enough, they'll feel a connection to you. They'll feel like they know you. And so leveraging the law of reciprocity goes back to the basics of human nature. Who's heard of rapport? Who's heard of rapport in sales? Excellent. So the secret to rapport is first, you must like the person in front of you. In order, so we know people do business with people they like and trust. And I'll talk about trust in a little bit because trust is important as well. But like is the first part because trust without like gets you absolutely no business. Right? If they just trust you, that's great, but they'll go with somebody else that they like because people will always go with the person they like and trust, not just trust. Hands to the camera if this makes sense so far. We're moving in the right direction. Excellent. So now when you go a step further, focusing on liking somebody can be hard work if you don't like that person. I want you to write this down. <laughs> Focusing on liking a stranger can be hard work if you don't genuinely like that person. But the work is worth it. I've been in houses where the person smelled bad. I've been in houses where the, the house was a mess. The, the person was disheveled. I've been in houses where the person was so rude to me in the first five minutes that I wanted to knock them out. I've been in those properties. But fortunately, early in my career, early in my life, I learned this secret. And what turns it around every time is I admire the thing that I hate the most. I quickly just look for, okay, that angst that they're hitting me with, that, that frustrated, aggravated, arrogant attitude they're giving me, that's a pretty cool trait. They're probably very polarizing. I bet that you scare away a lot of people is my first compliment. And I can understand that people would be intimidated by the way that you communicate. And I have to say, I find it to be very straightforward to the point, And it makes it a lot easier to work with people like you. Hands to the camera if you know you can turn that around, right? If you can turn, out, turn around your perception of somebody very quickly. The smell, right? When I, when I man, and I've been in houses with smells, right? Hands to the camera if you've been in one of those houses where <laughs> it's like, whoa, hey, something died. Walter, I, Walter, I promise to wear deodorant. <laughs> at the end of the month. I'm really sorry about that, but it was just one time. So if you're going to our mastermind event this week, uh, last Saturday of the month, we will be at Mike Shine's house. He's guaranteeing deodorant. And one thing I could say about Mike, he's never smelt bad when I've been around him. And uh, so it's it's safe environment. And we will be eating vegan uh, vegan food as well, because we got to keep the environment alive. So the the smell factor, as soon as I smell something, and I, I recognize these smells. I know what dead rats smell like. I know what rat poop smells like. I know what pets smell like. I know what all sorts of different cuisines smell like that previously I didn't like. And so as soon as I smell them, I say, hey, you've got an interesting smell in this house. Have you noticed it? And they say, no, most of the time. I say, oh, cool. Excellent. 
you know, it may be a thing that other people notice, but no big deal. We can figure out what it is. It may just hurt the price a little bit, but honestly, you know, it doesn't bother me. Let's keep moving. Let's keep going through. Acknowledge that they don't notice it. And some will say that, you know, they don't notice it, but they do notice it. Does that make sense as well? If they're pretending, you're pretending. <laughs> Do them the favor. This is the law of reciprocity. They're asking you for a favor. They're asking for you to like them. In sales and business, everybody just wants to be liked. Like people come out of the womb saying, love me, right? And that never stops. That never gets shut off. I don't care if you're or an adult, if you're in your 70s, that never goes away. If somebody shows that they like you, you will spend more time with them. Hence the camp, you've seen that to be true. Excellent. Now, last night I had a, a really cool situation with Darina. We were at the bar. Darina was in her high S mode, speaking very slow. And she really just wanted to spend time with me. But we went to a bar and we went to a bar with a high D bartender. And so when Darina said, I'd like to know what vegetables do you have in your vegetable quesadilla? The bartender was like, vegetables. And so Darina was like, in her head, this woman's being rude. And so went back, well, which vegetables? And the bartender had to walk away for a moment. Hands to the camera if you've ever seen something like this before. Maybe it's been you, right? Been out of rapport with somebody. S's and D's can be, you know, completely other sides of the spectrum. And I quickly shot a glance at Darina. I said, babe, high D personality, step up your tone, step up your speed or I'll handle it. But this woman is not feeling the, the slow calm. She's like, but the restaurant's slow. There's not a lot of business. And I looked at her and I said, babe, she doesn't know that. In her head, there's something going on. You can see by her energy, her intensity, there's some sort of thing happening right now in her life. Let's adjust. Let's give her a moment. And then Darina said the same thing that everybody says. We all do this. And write this down if you're, if you're a victim of this as well. But I'm in the mood to just enjoy and spend time with you and, and be relaxed. And I told her, I was like, me too, babe. Me too, right? Law of reciprocity, give it to her, right? But this woman is in the mood to get us served quickly so she can go and do whatever big crazy thing is on her plate. And so Darina did what every highly evolved person does. She adjusted. She said, this is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. Can we do this? Perfect. Bang. The woman was happy. And we smiled. And we got her name. We had to go a little extra on this relationship, right? So we got her name. We smiled, used her name the rest of the night. People love, write this down. People love the sound of their name. People love the sound of their name. They love a smile. They love the sound of their name. And they love a genuine compliment. And as the food came back, I said, you're really fast. Thank you big smile. She, she, her goal is speed. She has no reason to be fast, but her life goal in that moment was speed. And we identified that. And so we're able to get there. So let's give Darina a round of applause for being a highly evolved woman who just recognizes these things. She's able to adjust. For S's to go to D can be work. It's called holding your breath. It can be work. For a D to go down to an S, look, it can be work but it's worth it. For a C, a C who's looking at just information to jump over to the I, that's a lot of work. Like Cs don't even see fun. They don't know what fun is. They don't know what adventure is. They don't know what excitement is, right? And for an I to go down to a C and talk about statistics and numbers and processes, sounds like mind numbing, right? Hands to the camera if you're recognizing all of this. But it is the biggest gift you could give somebody. It is the biggest gift you could give somebody. And if you give a gift, they will reciprocate through liking you because there's only two steps that we require in order to close any sale on this planet, to close any deal on this planet. First is they must like you. Second, they have to trust you. That's the gift. That's the law of reciprocity in a nutshell. Give, 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 give what they're looking for. They're looking for somebody to meet them at their level. They're looking for somebody to, to appreciate them the way they are. All you're looking for in life is to be appreciated for who you are. 
You just want to know that you're in a community of people who understand what you're looking to do. Hands to the camera if you know you want to be part of the 100 millionaires. You want to be a millionaire. You want to help build and inspire other millionaires. Absolutely. Give yourselves a round of applause. I love that about you because we share the same piece. We share that same desire to be more so we can help more, to be a part of something bigger than us, to not have to do all the work ourselves, to be able to spread it across other people who like doing the things that they're doing, recognizing that other people are different. So we can leverage the law of reciprocity. This, and by the way, I started with the most leveraged way to use the law of reciprocity. Is that okay? I start with the basics. This is the highest leverage. I could end the class here. Most would not understand what I just said. Most would not do it. <laughs> I think that you're different. I know that you have the ability to say the most important thing in the world is to like people first and meet them where they're at and then build trust. But I want to go further into marketing because we do a lot of marketing. Hanson Karen is a business owner. You know, you do a lot of marketing and a lot of sales. It's a necessity. As a real estate investor, you're constantly marketing for off-market properties. So marketing is key. So the law of reciprocity states that if you give something that somebody is looking for, they will give back what you're looking for. Hanson Karen, if you want more properties in your pocket, in your prop, in your portfolio, in your desk, yes. So they have something that they want. They don't want the property. They want cash, right? And you're marketing. Make sure that you're giving away ways for people to get cash from their house. Not offering, not saying, hey, we buy houses. That's great because they do want to sell your house. That's probably the best marketing on the planet. But the way to draw them into that marketing for free is to state, this is how you sell your house if it's in rough conditions. This is how you sell your house if you need to sell quickly. And you go through processes, you teach, you give, you entertain, entertain, empower, and educate. Entertain to get them to like you, empower to enforce the liking, and educate for them to trust you. Entertain grabs their attention, gets them liking you. Empower makes them fall in love. And then educate in that order so that they can understand, so they can trust you. Like and trust. They cannot like you if they don't know about you, right? So first, you got to get their attention. That's where entertainment comes in. That's where that we call it the, the attention grabber, where sometimes you'll see my videos. I, I do something like this, or my videos always start off with me holding money, or I'll say something like, stop scrolling, right? Hands to the camera if you ever heard me say that before. <laughs> There's a reason behind it. That's the entertainment. That's the get the attention piece. And then I lead into empowerment, some sort of empowering statement, something that will teach and grow. And then the education piece. Now the education piece is ultimately what you're looking to move them towards. If you give them education on how to sell their house to a investor, that's where they move towards you. That's where the trust comes. And now they know how to work with you. But first, they've got to know about you and like you. So putting out entertaining content to your specific niche is key. And this is in marketing. Doing this in sales is also the same process. A couple of jokes right at the beginning go a long way. Now, jokes are contextual. So the context is based on the person you're in front of. It's not always based on what you think is funny. Hands the camera if you've, know, you've ever thrown a joke out there that just didn't land, but you knew it was good in a different room. Yeah. So jokes are contextual. The key to a great joke is listen to the jokes that they drop. People can't be with other people for longer than five minutes without making some sort of comment to laugh because laughter is a sign of discomfort and being uncomfortable and looking for a little levity in a situation. So Anytime you're in a home seller's house and they drop some sort of comment or joke, you've, you've just been given the blueprint of their comedy style, of their humor. You've been delivered the blueprint. Now you can formulate similar jokes. You can play off of that exact joke. That is, again, giving, giving laughter, giving into the person that they are, sharing who they are and embracing who they are and, and celebrating it because that's what they're looking for. They wanna know that the person they're in front of likes them, law of reciprocity. 
who here has noticed I do a ton of training videos for free, put a ton of training out there. I write books, I write blogs, I do videos, I do trainings, I speak on stages, I jump on podcasts, I do a lot of free content, a lot of free empowerment, free education. I have had people come to me not having time to go through the mentorship, not having time to join the mastermind, not having time to go to any of my events, but still go and pay for it and then message me and say, hey, look, I, I just, I get so much information from your free content that I felt like I needed to pay you something. I don't have time to go to this event. I just wanted to send the money. It was the only, I've, I've had money shipped to my house. I've had hundred dollar bills shipped to my house with love letters, just saying, man, thank you so much for changing my life. Thank you so much for being impactful. Thank you for all the information you put out there. If you hadn't responded to that text, I wouldn't have had the deal. I just closed on it. I just flipped it. I made this much money. So I, I get those constantly from free content. No ask of money. Does that make sense? Give first what people are looking for. Give first, even if it's a small bite. Who's ever been in the store? Who's ever been in a store where they got that dish out front where they're like, hey, try the, try the cheese or or the Asian cuisine at the mall, they're just like, here you go. Like there's three other Asian places, but I've got the, the free uh, starter for you right here. 50% of the time you go and you get their food, right? Like there's the people who are just like, okay, who else has, who else has one? Who else has one? Like they'll go around and eat all the different snacks, but here's what, here's what the magic of that is. Even if they're eating all the free stuff, the store they go to is the one that gave, one of them gave them something free. Can't you can't recognize that if you've been a victim of the free sample. Yes. <laughs> but who cares? The free sample is great because you were going to get food anyway. It's just sh somebody showed belief in you. Somebody showed faith in you. Somebody gave you something for free, a little something, a little gift. And so you reciprocated. You went back and said, you know what? Thank you. I appreciate that. Come on in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy all that chow mein. Let's move to the end of the line. Let's keep moving. Let's go. So the, the business principle here, leverage the law of reciprocity, is coming from a place of giving. And this isn't giving to get. I want to be very clear. This is not giving to get. This is giving something that you have abundance of. Giving something you have abundance of that you could continuously, effortlessly continue to pump out. If it's work for you, there may be some adjustments that you have to make up here to make it more fun for yourself. Like I'll, I'll be honest. Hands to the camera if you've, uh, before I be honest, hands to the camera, have you ever done a video before? Who here's done a, a Facebook Live video? Excellent, excellent. Who here's done a normal video? Excellent. Who's built a YouTube channel? All right, all right. So understanding the thought and the time and the work that goes into those. Is it possible that that seems like a lot of work to do consistently every day for weeks and months and years? Hands to the camera if you recognize that could be a lot of work. You're right. You're absolutely right. There are some parts of giving that can be a little bit feeling like work for me. If I stay in a normal low state, but if I can increase my energy and I think about the people I'm serving, think about the people that I'm helping, then it becomes easier to create the content, it becomes easier to force myself to sit in front of a camera for a couple of hours and teach and provide value. And even last night, I created a, a great video from Wealth Principle number one. And I went and I took our long form content and I chopped it up into five minutes. You know, an hour and a half video, I turned into a five minute video. It was work. But at the end, I had something that was easier to consume. And I tested it this morning. I opened up my YouTube channel. I played the video and I watched the entire thing. And I have a hard time watching my own content. Hence the camera if you have a hard time watching your own videos. Absolutely, right? So, but I was able to watch the entire thing. Like I have never sat through an entire 52 weeks of wealth because like, it's uncomfortable for me. I see all my imperfections. I see all my flaws. I see all the things I've missed. And I'm like, oh, I could have added that. I should have added a little more here, right? But with the short form, it was like enjoyable for me. So I knew that I'd created better content. Now it gets me excited to go and hire and pay somebody to do that for me in the future. But I had to do it first. I had to go do it <laughs> because I know I'm giving a gift. And so to me, it's worth paying for that. I'm at that point where I can. Here's, here's I want you to write this down. Here's the most valuable lesson 
from when it comes to the law of reciprocity. Think of who your client is. Think of who your ideal client is. Then go to them, right? These are steps, write it down. One, step one, think of who your ideal client is. Step two, go to them. Find, like make connection, say hi. Step three, ask them what their most pressing need is, what their most pressing desire is. Ask them what they want right now. Step four, thank them for being vulnerable and sharing with you. Step five, figure out how to get it for them. You may not have the skills, right? Real estate investors, you may not have the skills to solve the direct problem that a person is having right now because their direct problem may not be selling that house. Their direct problem may be that, you know, they're looking for a, a place to go on vacation this month and they haven't figured out like what to do, where to go. Being the person who connects them to a travel agent could be your piece. Does this make it sense? It doesn't have to be connected to what you sell. The client is still the client. You are building a relationship with that person. This five-step process is the gold. It's the law of reciprocity. It's leveraging the heck out of the law of reciprocity. Now, here's the thing you gotta be careful with. Don't target small clients. Because if you've gotta do this with a thousand people to make your numbers work, it's not gonna work. But if you can target 50 to 100 people, 50 to 100 ideal, perfect clients, now this process can be leveraged all the way. All you need is 100. You've heard me talk about the 100 millionaires. My goal is to build 100 millionaires who are inspired to build 100 millionaires. It's not just the first part that's important. It's the second part that is really what I'm looking for. People who are inspired to go and build their own 100 millionaires. And I'm willing to do the work, the first part, to get you there. Hands to the camera if you recognize that. Putting it in, putting in the initial investment, putting in the initial work. The 52 Weeks of Wealth is a process it is a system that is geared to make you an unstoppable wealth building creator in this planet. Somebody who can give more to other people, give more to your family, give more to your community, give more to your tribe, give more to your friends, to build a team that is getting more from you in use value than you're getting in cash value. Because it's okay to get paid very well. Hands to the camera if you recognize that. It's okay to make 50,000 on a flip, 100,000 on a flip. It's okay to make five, 10, 15, 20,000 on transactions. Some of the coaches on here, it's okay to make five, 10, $20,000 for helping people, moving them forward. It's okay, right? If you're a business owner, an investor, if you're, even if you're trading stocks, right? The investments that you're making, or trading crypto, the investments that you're making are serving somebody else. Hands to the camera if you know how, how stock market works, and how crypto works. All right, hands to the camera if you have no freaking idea how people make money in these things. Yeah, at least you're honest, all right? Even the people who think they know don't know. <laughs> so when there's blood on the water, buy. When the stock goes green and it's making money, hold. It's a simple process. There is no sell. There is no sell. The only time we sell is if a stock goes so high that it becomes too big of a part of your portfolio, now you can give the gift of selling that stock very high to somebody who's in a desperate situation to buy. Does that make sense? But you never sell the whole thing. Just sell a piece, the part that went over what it should be in your portfolio. Does, does this make it sense? You're providing liquidity. If somebody, if somebody is desperate to buy a stock overpriced, sell it to them, right? Do them the favor, sell the stock. Not all of it, but sell some. And if somebody is desperate, desperate to sell the stock at a low price, they need to get rid of it at a low price. Well, be a decent human being. Offer them some liquidity. Give them that ability to sell you that stock. Hands to the camera if this makes sense. This is how the universe works. People are moving around at all times with a passion and a burning desire. Your job is to identify what that is. People at all times are walking around with something in front of them that is driving them insane, that is moving, making them frustrated, that is stressing them out, that is making their lives painful. It's your job to serve that need, not necessarily always what makes you money. Sometimes that need needs to be served first before they'll pay you. Does that make sense? Sometimes 
we have to give something that we're not used to giving in order to get to give what we love giving away. Does that make sense? Outside of your comfort zone, stretching a little bit. Now, the key to building a great business is identify what you have an abundance of. Identify what you have an abundance of, something that's infinite. For me, it's been knowledge. It's been a desire to attain knowledge. It's been the ability to speak clearly and communicate emotions, feelings, and complex processes and make them simple. It's been the ability to build teams, build communities. Those are things that I could give away over and over. And I would never run out. I could scale it with the internet. I could scale it with Zoom. I could scale it with social media. This makes sense. These are, things, these are my gifts. These are things that I have an abundance of. A desire for knowledge means I can deliver knowledge. A desire to acquire real estate means I can deliver the ability to, to acquire real estate. A desire to build wealth means I can deliver the ability to build wealth. And so I have these strong desires that I'm able to transmute into something that I can give away. Most people in my position, when they've gotten to the level that I've gotten to, they have the same ability to give away. They just choose not to. They choose not to. And the reason they choose not to is because it can be work. It can be, it can be uncomfortable. It could take you outside of your comfort zone. The reason more wealthy people are not teaching and training and coaching and mentoring is because they've gotten comfortable in their life. They've hit their goals. And so they're, they're regressing, they're moving downward. They're not moving forward in a progressive manner. Does that make sense? So if you're not giving on a level that you could be giving, set your goals higher. If you're not giving on a level that, that makes you have a financial balance in your life, set higher financial goals, higher giving goals. How many people can you serve? When I set the 100 millionaires, I was like, that's, that's a pretty impossible task at the time that I said it. This was almost two years ago. I was like, dude, this is, this is nuts. This is going to be insane for me to push this, pull this off. Now, as they get closer, I realize just how difficult it is, just how time consuming it is. And so I have to step up the amount of energy I'm putting into. I have to give even more, scale my giving. Does that make sense? Be on more podcasts, create better content attract more people and inspire people at a different level to pull them in. It's a constant adjustment of the goal. Not the main goal. The main goal is still there, but it's a, an adjustment on how we get there. What, what tools and leverage in your business. If you're not happy with what you're making, give more, write this down. If you're not happy with your income right now, focus on giving more to the clients who you know would pay you to the clients who you know have the ability and the desire to pay you. It may not be their most pressing desire yet, but focus on what their most pressing desire is and give that away. And if you don't have the skill or the abundance in giving that thing yet, go and get it. Write this down. I can learn any skill. I can make any connection. I can acquire any knowledge. Write those three down. Those are powerful. I can learn any skill or I can attain any skill. I can learn, I can make any connection and I can learn any type of knowledge. There's nothing out there that somebody wants that you couldn't deliver to them. There's nothing on this planet that somebody else has a burning desire to have that you could not be the person to deliver it. Does that make sense? Would it take time to learn and acquire that? Yes. And if you have enough clients, enough potential prospects, not suspects, prospects, if you have enough people who are really good for your, your 100 list who want that same thing, then you had damn well better go get that skill or that knowledge or that contact. Does that make sense? It's worth adjusting, not on the how do I serve my, in my business side. You don't need to get any better at that. Focus on the giving side. What is it that I can give first to bring in that relationship that I know is going to make the big chunk of money? What is it I can give first so that I can move forward with what I'm looking for? Speaking of giving and people who've really helped us out, I want to highlight uh, two of our alchemists, Elizabeth Miller and Kevin Pereira. 
Video testimonials. We asked everybody for video testimonials in the community. We said, hey, look, can you get us video testimonials so that we can market with those and put them out there and say, hey, these are people who have worked with us, who have improved their lives. Now we have two people who just went above and beyond. I want to give a round of applause for everybody who sent us a testimonial. Your testimonials were amazing and we do use them and we are using them. So thank you. And then there were these two. It was like an epic battle between Elizabeth Miller, who really dropped this fire video on us. And then this mystery video that was coming from Kevin Pereira for weeks, this video that he'd spent weeks and weeks on hours on came through. And we looked at the video and we we're like, dude, this is epic, right? Elizabeth Miller and Kevin Pereira, we got a guy and a gal who have been through our community. They're big contributors. They donate a lot of their time and they, they deserve something special, both of them, because they put so much effort into it. Uh, so we had a voting on the Facebook page and both of you will be getting a t-shirt of your choice from our store. Let's give them a round of applause because we're abundant. We got a lot of t-shirts. We can, we can take care of our people who are taking care of us. You know, you've given us something we want to give back. They contribute every Monday night in the Wholesale Mastermind. If you haven't joined, I'm sorry, the Wholesale Bootcamp. If you haven't joined the Wholesaling Bootcamp, uh, Kevin and Liz, can you drop your affiliate links for the Wholesaling Bootcamp? Uh, drop it in the chat and then drop it on Facebook as well. And then we put the YouTube video out, drop it out on the YouTube video. I want to make sure that the people who are running that program are getting paid for what they're doing. So when they drop their links, they get paid if you jump into the Wholesale Mastermind. Isn't that fair? Isn't that cool? law of reciprocity. They're giving me the opportunity to build millionaires. I want to give them money because I've got an abundance of money. The second somebody pays for the wholesaling bootcamp, I've got money in my pocket. And I want to give some of that back. Answer the camera if you know that's how the law of reciprocity works. You can leverage it in everything. Excellent. Before I talk about the mentorship, I want to bring Mike Shine on because Mike's got the book of the week, which Mike actually gifted to me a while back and I read it and it was such a great book. Uh, he ended up finally getting it back. It was in our office, uh, The Go-Giver. And I have my own copy now, thanks to uh, Mike inspiring me. Mike Shine, book of the week. Thank you, Gualter. The book of the week is The Go-Giver by Bob Berg and John David Mann. So cool. I have a mutual friend who knows Bob and Bob actually sent me another copy that he autographed the card. Really cool. And then Doug McGurk just told me he's actually friends with Bob and that they, and he lives right near him. So a lot of connections with the go-giver. It's a, it's a very, it's called a little story about a powerful business idea. It's so inspiring. I have to admit, I got emotional on a few of the chapters. So a tear was shed. This book is just, um, you know, it's kind of a perfect place for us to be doing this in this week because the last couple of books, like 80-20 rule, and they were going deep into like the weeds. This kind of steps you back. You've got the, um, uh, what are they called in there? Hang on. The five laws of stratospheric success, which is awesome, but it's done in like a very simple way. And uh, you can read this book in about a day. And once you start reading it, it has a story. So kind of like uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it'll uh, keep you um, attached to it. It's such a great book. It's so inspiring. I, after you read it, people talk about this book all the time. Uh, so if you want stratospheric success and you want inspiration and an amazing story, this is the book for you. And uh, and that's the book of the week, The Go-Giver. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Thank you. Let's give Mike Shine a round of applause. Excellent, Mike. Thank you so much. And Mike is a go-giver, right? He, he delivers a book every week. He helped me build the 52 Wealth Principles books that are attached to each one of those principles. And it was not easy. He and I have actually revised it a, a second time to make it much more clean. We eliminated two books that we didn't think fit mostly because we had two books that we wanted in. And so we had to make sure that everything in the 52 weeks fit the principle that was attached to it. And we had to make sure that the books that he and I thought were the best books for people to read were included in the 52 weeks of wealth. Hands to the camera if you think it's valuable that we've made all of this possible. I've read over 350 books. I got a lot more books to read, but I've read over 350. I know the ones that'll move you fastest towards your goal. 
And The Go-Giver by far is one of the books that once you go through it, it'll change your life. You'll never look at things the same way again. Hence the camp, if you're committed to reading a book a week with us, if you're in the mentorship, you've made that come out a long time ago. So the mentorship really quickly is a process that was put into place so that people could be successful faster. It was not designed to do anything except for build millionaires. It is designed 100% to teach you the habits and principles that will help you become successful towards million dollar status, earning more millions and getting to the next level where you're able to give back to more people. Hands to the camera if it's okay that it came from a very, very specific place. Excellent. It's eight weeks of coaching calls with the celebrity coaches. You get a one-on-one -on -one session with Terry Wager, along with eight weeks of group coaching with myself and our other celebrity coaches who've all written books. You get exclusive membership only community. This is the Alchemist Nation community. There's over 130 of us in there now. Hands to the camera if you're already an Alchemist graduate in the program, mentorship, yes. Give yourselves a round of applause. It's a beautiful, amazing community. Each one of you is moving forward powerfully changing your life, improving the lives of the people around you as you grow your net worth, as you grow yourself, because you cannot become a millionaire without changing who you are. And it's okay to change the things that we're changing. I promise. We'll keep your core. We'll keep the beautiful soul that you have, that inner child, the person you've always been. We're going to keep that intact. We're just going to change some of the negative belief systems. We're just going to change some of those things that stress you out, that make you anxious, that make you uncomfortable with success. And we're going to shift them over to empowering beliefs, the right thoughts, the way that millionaires think is a little different, which is why when they get a million, they turn it into two million. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So here's, here's how it works. A millionaire gets a million, the second million is right behind. Somebody who's not a millionaire gets a million, they go right back to or worse than they were financially. We've seen this before. Yes. I'm not making any of this up, right? Excellent. So we've read the same articles. We've watched, we've seen the same facts. We set weekly targets and assignments. We make sure that you know all that you need in order to be successful in your business and investments. You even get a free ticket, a free net worth tracker to keep your goals on target. Hence the camp, if you recognize the value of the net worth tracker, we have it in all formats. Now it's on the website, it's in PDF, it's on Excel. There are multiple different ways to track your net worth because that's how you end up building passive income. The exclusive access to the celebrity coaches is by far one of the most valuable assets. You get access to free half hour sessions with our 10 celebrity coaches who help you in the areas of mindset, finance, advising, business, credit, and more. Learning how to evaluate deals with Ms. Jorsky and coming soon, by the way, coming real soon. This is a crypto thing. A lot of times in the crypto community, people say when, and they spell it without an H, W-E-N. So I will have to tell you the same thing that that response deserves soon. <laughs> the crypto course will be coming very soon. Mitch, when he delivers it, wants to do it the right way. We already have the basic beginner course on Alchemist University. If you go into Alchemist University, you can get the Scaredy Cat Guides crypto course. It's about an hour long or two hours long where Mitch went through the process of building a wallet, getting access to an exchange, how to transfer funds. And he talked about a lot of the safety protocol that you have to put into it. The next one will be yield farming. Hands to the can if you've heard of yield farming before. Excellent. It's a very, very powerful way to leverage crypto, but it's complex. There is a process involved. And so Mitch wants to make sure that he delivers it the right way. We've got other coaches. We've got Dr. Terry Wager. We've got Doug McGurk. These are professionals in the mind. Dr. Terry Wager literally is the generator coach, right? He teaches you how to generate more income. Doug McGurk teaches you how to close. He's the closing hacks. He teaches NLP. He teaches sales. He teaches mindset process so you can close deals. We have Mike Shine, who is a legal attorney who teaches how to build partnerships. He's, in fact, he's the authority on partnerships because all of his businesses run with partnerships. His investments are partnerships. His spouse, he's been with over 19 years. And they've built five amazing children together who are all sometime, somehow, some way, getting the knowledge from the books that they're reading, getting the knowledge from the 52 Weeks of Wealth. In fact, some weeks you'll even see Mike's children on the call with us. Let's give Mike and the other coaches a round of applause. We've got Mitch Durfee who's gone and built a credit training course who people are already using. I know I got a, 
a conversation from Melanie Santos the other day. She said, look, my, my credit score is going through the freaking moon. And I told her, I was like, you should, you should talk to Mitch because he'll help you get that next level. I was talking to Saeed yesterday. Saeed told me that Mitch had helped him get 30 more points on his credit score in just a few days. And that I told him, well, if you got 30 in a few days, wait another month or two because it, it will stack up. It keeps compounding as more people register in the credit department. And he told me that that's exactly what Mitch Durfee had told him. The processes work. The systems work. The coaches that we have are very good at what they do. We've got Ryan McGovern, who is a Series 7 financial planner. He's licensed as a financial planner, but he delivers. Pretty sure that's McDermott, but... Whoa! <laughs> McGovern's going to be all... Uh... <laughs> He's going to be happy. Now I'm switching the other way. All us Irish, guy, Irish guys sound the same. Oh, Ryan, oh, Ryan McDermott. All right, so Ryan, Ryan is the king of the financial uh, world. He runs the net worth tracker, teaches you how to use it properly, and he helps you advantage yourself to taxes. Hands to the camera if you know we've got a powerful coaching community in the mentorship. The price is ridiculously low. The price is ridiculously fair. It's, it's actually unfair on our side. It is so unfairly priced. I've been told by everybody who's ever signed up that it was super affordable and that the price should be higher and then that they're thankful that it was extremely low. Hands to the camera if you've been one of those people who are like, yeah, that was way more affordable than it should have been, but I'm thankful and blessed that you priced it the way you did. The reason we priced it the way we did is you probably wouldn't have bought it if we put it to what it was worth. And the reason we price it the way we did is we don't want the people who don't see the value in it to jump into the program. Does that make sense? So for $1,200, you gain access to all of the coaches. You gain access to all of Alchemist University, all the trainings in Alchemist University. Hands to the camera if you have not even come close to tapping all the information on Alchemist University yet. Not even come close to getting through it all. And there's more coming. There's more coming. I'm, I'm building out the most ridiculous training program because I keep getting questions from people. Anytime I get a question, I write it down. I say, I'm doing a video on that. Anytime I get a question, I write it down. I'm going to do a little a blog or a process on it. So the Alchemist University continues to grow and become something valuable that I no longer have to have conversations. Law of leverage. <laughs> Give yourselves a round of applause. Every question you ask becomes an asset for me. Every single problem you have, I turn into an asset, something that I can go and give to somebody else. Hence, if you recognize law of reciprocity is everywhere in this business, everywhere in this community. It's about giving. It's about giving. It's about giving. And then when we think we can't give anymore, we ask, what else do you need? And we give a little bit more <laughs> because there is more to give. There, we can find it. I operate from the same place I'm asking you to operate from in your business. If I find there's a problem, I'm going to find out how to solve that problem. And then I'm going to offer it to you and everybody else who's in the same community, who has the same dreams, the same aspirations, the same vision, the same plan. Is that fair? Does that make sense? Yes. Darina, can you drop your link for Calendly in Facebook and here? If somebody wants to learn more about the mentorship, I want to make sure that they go through Darina. She's been in the mentorship with us for over a year now. She's watched everybody come in. She's listened to all the stories. She knows the testimonials. She knows who, who have been successful and who has been extremely successful. We have people who've come in who've become millionaires just in the first year. We have our unicorns, right? The, the Ryan McGoverns, we have the Saeeds. These are people who are just absolutely crushing it. Ken Hoffman is right there, right there on his way, just absolutely crushing it. Kim Rodriguez, Kim Harvey, right? These are people who came in already with great businesses, little tweaks, became skyrocketing machines. They were already there. They were already going. Hands to the camera if you recognize these people's names. Yeah, they're powerful people. These men and women are going to the moon, right? Like Elon Musk, they're like, man, he's building the sky ship for us. <laughs> we're going to the moon. We're taking it to Mars. We're out of this world. We're out of this. Uh... There you go. Desiree's got the book. So the mentorship is by far the best investment you'll ever make. The price keeps going up for a reason. As we level up what our courses are, we increase the price to hold out the people who are not, I'm not going to say not worthy, but they don't believe they're worthy. They don't believe that this is a big enough goal for them or that the goal is too big for them. 
And so the price keeps going up each year. My goal, I set the goal this morning. The goal for next year is to have the program be $2,500. But we'll continue all the way through the year at $1,200 because that's the plan I set out at the beginning of the year. Previously, we ran the mentorship. We were selling between $600 to $1,000. And we've progressed and increased the price. And here's what I've noticed. And you may want to write this down for your own business. Here's what I've noticed. Every time we increase the price, the quality of our membership increases with it. The people we attract into the community increase with the increased price. Isn't that interesting? And I think it's the law of reciprocity because now we're asking you to give. And the more you give, the more you're capable of giving, the more you're going to take out of the program, the more you're going to pay attention, the more you're going to take as far as action. Hands to the camera if you recognize that as truth. Yes, the more you give, the more you're capable of giving. The more you flex that muscle of investing in yourself, the more you're able to leverage the knowledge you've invested because you recognize the value of your time. I had a really deep conversation with Ron yesterday about time. And I've been thinking about time all week. You're going to see some videos from me talking about time very soon. The reason, the reason the rich only talk about time and the reason the poor only talk about money is because the poor don't understand the value of their time and the rich know that time is more valuable than money. As it can, if you've seen that, if you recognize those conversations, if somebody's talking about money, they're probably poor. And if somebody's talking about time, they're either rich or on their way to rich. Does that make sense? Wealthiest people I know, the wealthiest people I know say, I've always got time for you. It's crazy. I've heard this over and over and over from the wealthiest people I know. They always say, I always have time for you. The poorest people I know will always consistently tell me, I don't have time for that. They don't believe in the abundance of time. They always say, I can't afford it. I can't afford, I can't afford that program. The wealthy people will tell me, I don't know if I can commit the time to that program. Does that make sense? The wealthiest people I've spoken to tell me, I don't know if I can commit to the time frame of that program. The poorest people I know tell me, I don't know if I can pay that amount. The amount seems like a lot, right? In every product I've ever sold, whether it was real estate, whether it was coaching, whether it was uh, as an accountant, every, every business I've ever been in, that was always the conversation. It's very, very important to listen to your clients, listen to what their concerns are and be aware if price is the concern, it's going to be a concern all the way through. If time is the concern, you can fix that. You can make your product more consumable. You can make it much easier to work with. You never, ever want to play the price game. Do not play the price game. Play the value game. How much more can you deliver in a short period of time? How much more can you deliver to a person in a shorter period of time to increase their likelihood of happiness and success, to reduce the problem that they have in their life? How do you save them time? And if, if you don't like the word saving time, because I'm not a huge fan of saving time, I like the idea of gaining time. How can you give them more time back? How can you give them more life back? How can you give them access to more of the abundance of life? Answer can if you know that's what the hundred millionaire is all about. With the knowledge of the value of your time, you can have more money. With learning how to operate the right way so you can attract a million dollars to yourself without spending any more time, you're now gaining the understanding of time. That's what millionaire really means. To become a millionaire means you understand the value of your time. You understand the value of time itself. Does that make sense? Look, there's two things I really love on this planet, real estate and time. Real estate and time, you know why? They're just not making any more land and they're not making any more time. The two best assets to play with, real estate and time. And if you combine them, you own real estate for a long time, you become very, very wealthy because real estate and time work together. Let's open it up to the coaches. Let's give yourselves a round of applause. Hanging out with us this long, valuable lesson, yes. Gaining something. 
Coaches, let's open it up. Ryan McGurm- uh, McDermott. <laughs> Sorry, brother. <laughs> what would you say is your big tip for leveraging the law of reciprocity? Um, all, all us Irish guys sound the same. And, and uh, Walter, we, we need to see more of that brogue as we, uh, as we move forward. But, um, but yeah, no, on reciprocity, you know, I, I have a strategic partner uh, that's a local company you know, that we outsource some very specific things to, you know, that kind of help our clients or help our business clients with. And um, when I first met them like 12, 13 years ago, um, this like every single member of the team from the top, top to the bottom, were all sort of just like highly positive, amazing. They go above and beyond for clients. So I remember asking, you know, the founder of the company, I'm like, how, you know, you know, what's the gimmick? Like, you know, did you have some recruiting hack? Like, were you finding these amazing people or, like, like, what is this thing that you're doing? And her um, response back to me was her secret is that she treats her employees like customers. And, and what do we do with customers? We, we ask them what they want, and we give it to them. And we get we get back in return what we want. And, um, you, you know, it's just fascinating. So, you know, the, the boss who I always thought was was kind of on top, you know, put her employees on top and, you know, and then she was there to serve them. And uh, it was like, I remember hearing that and it was like that Seinfeld episode where George decides to do everything opposite um, of, of what he, uh, you, you know, what he, you know, what his uh, intu- intuition would tell him. And then he ends up getting, getting the girl and getting a job, dream job at the Yankees or anything like that. And she, and she, when she elaborated on this, I mean, all the things that she was giving them, you know, like were actually the employees wanted a lot of the same things. It was, you know, rewards tied to goals and stuff like that. And she, you know, she started to build this out and then she built it a management team and the management team became servants. And, uh, and, and if you really think about it, it all comes back to reciprocity. It's giving the people that are most important that can drive your business forward what they want. And, um, you know, today she's got a best in class company and one that I aspire to have myself and one that I hope to grow through. I see our coaches believe in reciprocity. I believe in reciprocity, even, you know, Walter and how he's growing this team and, and movement. Um, it's all about reciprocity. So that's Let's point. give Ryan McDermott a round of applause. Ryan speaks the law of reciprocity. <laughs> I love it. Doug McGurk, you're up, brother. Right on. Great call as always. Um, opposite George, one of my favorite episodes. Love it. Uh, so a couple things. I mean, it's always brilliant. I, we, we want to think in terms of energy too, right? Because it's not like reciprocity is not like the, uh, and, you, and you brought it out, but sometimes people get stuck in it thinking it's like we're in the mafia. Hey, I give to you, you give to me, right? And it, it doesn't work like that. What we're doing is when we give, when we're freely giving, we're now opening our hands for it to come from somewhere else. So energetically speaking, that's the, the mindset that it's not looking specifically to whom you have provided resources given or what have you. It's that you've put that energy out there to open yourself up for it. And then the other comment, uh, some of you may or may not know, I worked in the treatment industry, my wife and I worked, and one of the things, the keys to our success in building relationships was consciously asking that question to Walter's point, like, well, what do I admire about this person? You know, what's special about this person? What's unique about this person? What could I learn from this person? What could I celebrate in this person? And the toughest, hardest, most like frustrated, angry people always ended up coming around and really appreciating our relationship because we never ran that filter of, you know, like uh, this, you know, basically looking for what's wrong. We looked for what was beautiful. We looked for what was awesome so that we could find common ground on that, which created a reciprocal relationship of honor, respect, love, and then efficacy because then we were able to help move them to their next level in their life so uh food for thought and that's all i have to say about that let's give doug mcgurk a round of applause well done doug well done let's see the Dorina- real quick 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 share on that i forgot to tell Ooh. you this is a great way great tool um whenever you're at a networking event and someone you know they're like what do you do 
Like, just go, hey, enough about me. Tell me about you. And then like earmark whatever they say they are looking for, like ask them like, well, who's your ideal contact? Who are you here to meet tonight? And then make it your mission to introduce them that night. Like as you're, in, as you're hearing what everybody does, you connect those people, you have a friend for life. Cause now they're like, and then like, oh, no, really, what do you do? Cause now I want to help you. Um, so always give first. That's, you know, obviously Bob Berg's message. Sorry, just reminded me of, of that. Cause that's a, it's a, it's a great tool to use in, in that environment, but sorry. One more. Thanks for Doug McGurk. We appreciate it, brother. Darina, you're up. Yes. Uh, thank you, Doug. That was that was really empower empowering. I appreciate you sharing that because I think we almost like forgot how to network and it's coming back. So that's a great tip. And speaking of uh, today's lesson, what we kind of came to mind is that, yes, sometimes we feel if we come across with someone and we may not instantly like them but instantly right there we get to switch and we get to change our attitude towards that and um, my best friend once told me that when she comes into contact with people she doesn't know and they're totally different they're like so different you think there's no connection and but coming from a place of giving she's like you know what if I pay attention to the person who is completely opposite of me, I can learn the most. If I talk to a person who is just like me, I learn pretty much not a lot. But if a person is really different, how can I understand his reality or her reality? Like I can learn so much more by talking to people I may at first feel like not connected. And I'm like, oh, that's so really true. So now like anybody I meet, I'm open to give my energy, to give my time and attention. In the reverse, I know that I'll, I'll get richer because I'll know more. And yeah, so if you have that instinct there, oh, there's nothing to give, change it and talk to the person and pay full attention. All you have is really your attention to give. That's your time and your attention. That, that's like priceless. So it's free and it's priceless at the same time. So give by learning from the opposite of you people. Let's give Darina a round of applause. And she just dropped a bomb. I don't know if you caught it, but attention is the most valuable asset in the world. It's your time. Your attention is your time. And when you give your time to somebody, the right people will appreciate it. The wrong people will not see the value in it. And that's okay. You'll know who the wrong people are really quickly. But giving the right people your attention, giving them your time, serves you and them. It's the law of reciprocity. The first gift you can give to somebody, show them the respect, make eye contact, be intent, paying attention to what they're saying, show interest. The law of reciprocity starts from the very beginning of that relationship with a smile, eye contact, and a genuine desire to listen to what somebody else is saying. I said it in the book, broke to a quarter million. I said, when you think you're listening, stop and listen. Nice, Charles. Great job, brother. Little, uh, little book drop right there. I love it. <laughs> also, also, I wanted to say that for the first time ever, my mom joined this call, Elena. And today is Mother's Day. So good to see you, Mom. Um, Let's give Darina's mom a round of applause. She raised a great woman. And for all the mothers out there, my mom including, happy Mother's Day. We appreciate you and all the work and the commitment you put into raising us spoiled brats who think we walk on shit. The truth is we've discovered we do and we can do whatever we want. And we owe it all to our parents and our mothers who made sure that we had the confidence growing up. So let's give mothers a round of applause for all the commitment that they put into our lives. If you're married to a mother, make sure. She feels like she's the queen of the house today and every day. And if you have a mother in your life, all mothers, make sure you reach out to them and let them know how special they are and how important they are. The work that they're doing is God's work. They're making sure that the next level of human being is taken care of, making sure that they're instilled with the right thoughts, the right motivation, the right inspirations, the right mindset. Being a mother is hard, hard work but it's also the best, most rewarding work on the planet. Hands to the camera, if you recognize you're building amazing human beings. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you're not a mother yourself, 
recognize that the mothers are building amazing human beings and you're contributing to that by being an amazing human being, by inspiring them, by educating them, sharing your knowledge. You can help more people by learning yourself. Hans Camp, you recognize that already. Absolutely. By becoming better, we can help other people be better. Dr. Terry Wager, you're up. You know, um, there's a saying that I've used for probably about 30 years, believe it or not. And it's for free and for fun because I want to. And the free is not money. It's anxiety and it's expectation. Free of expectation, free of anxiety. I do these things for free and for fun because I want to. And if you find yourself not wanting to, then you got to look at what's going on with you inside. Um, we've been talking about this idea of reciprocity. When I was in school, I did years and years of free work and they called a practicum. And I was told I cannot charge for my services. I have to learn to be of service before I can actually charge. And it screwed me up when I moved into actually charging for things because I didn't know how to do it. But one thing it really did is it took my motivation for getting for myself out of the equation so I could learn to be present for other people. It was one of the best gifts I ever got from my education is learning how to be truly of service for free and for fun because I want to. The other thing that, that um, this conversation was reminding me of is uh, I have a best friend. Uh, Christine is my best friend. But before I ever met her, years and years ago, again, 30 years ago, I met my very best male friend I ever met. And the funny thing is when I met him, we had a fight. I started it. I judged him as not somebody I wanted to be around, not somebody I wanted to take the time to get to know. He ended up kicking the chair out from under me because I was an asshole to him when I first met him. And I met him in a friggin' men's group, actually. And uh, he's like, I'm hurt. And I'm like, I don't care. And he kicked my chair out. And we started over from that moment. And the funny thing is, is that one lesson taught me, stop closing people off before you get to know them. Learn who they are. Identify what you like about somebody. Look for something to like about somebody because everybody can be a resource. Everybody can be a relationship. Everybody can help you get the result you're looking for if you're open to it. And so this law of reciprocity, you know, it works both ways. You get what you give. And so if you're giving good, you get good. If you're not giving so good, you get that back too. That's what I got. Excellent. Let's give Dr. Terry Wager a round of applause. Another valuable insight from one of our coaches, the highly esteemed Dr. Terry Wager. Let's see, who else do we have on the call right now? Kim Harvey, let's get your take. Hi guys, happy Saturday, happy Mother's Day to all you beautiful ladies out there. Good to see everybody. Um, my dog is gonna be in a barking fit in about three seconds because he's this man, so sorry. Um, so yeah, Terry, I totally, everybody might totally agree with everybody that everybody's philosophies and as a mom of three beautiful daughters, myself and all of them are grown up and I have two granddaughters and a grandson on the way in July. Um, I really truly believe and I was blessed to be a stay at home mom, although I was a very busy mother trying to do other careers and start other careers. But anyways, I think time um, and quality of time and um, investing in your children and, you know, listening and reading books and tucking them in at night. Um, all of that is just totally invaluable. So time and um, quality time that you spend with your kids and money can't buy. And that's... Let's give Kim Harvey a round of applause. And since we're running with mothers, we'll bring the queen of mothers up, Kim Rodriguez. <laughs> Hi, everyone. What, uh, you know, I always love to say I'm so blessed to be in this community. I'm so blessed to meet Walter and everyone here. It's true. There were so many bombs dropped today. Like I can't even, I just can't even. Um, so yes, happy Mother's Day, everyone. Whether you're a mom of fur babies, a mom of 
you know, children. Seven or, children. <laughs> seven children. Yeah. <laughs> I know you like to say that seven children. Yeah. Seven kids. Here we go. <laughs> um, it teaches you a lot. And the law of reciprocity, you know, today we talked about, it, it's really about giving and no matter where you are on your path, right? Because we are all in different places on our path. You may be sitting here thinking, what could I possibly give? And you may be here thinking that, you know, how can I start giving? And I think many of the coaches already talked about it. It's as simple as when you're meeting someone, asking them about them, you know, just taking action is part of the process. So giving automatically translates into receiving. And although we're not looking to receive, you have to be open to receive. Um, and I just, I'm so blessed to be here. So thank you. And I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Let's give Kim Rodriguez a round of applause. Michael Shine, we saved the best for last. Mike Shine, your insight. Thanks, Walter. You know, I, I think it's an honor that you put me last, but it's, I was going to say that it's really tough to follow everybody, Doug and Terry and Ryan. And then when Kim, Kim uh, Rodriguez comes up, she basically even said that, that it's tough to follow other people. So, um, but I'll, I'll do my best. I, uh, I noticed that it's counterintuitive to give first. And I think that a lot of my journey in this group has been learning that you, you give and you just give selflessly. And actually that's the best feeling of all. It's, uh, it's not about the money. It's not about what you get. The books always say, if you give to charity, it'll come back tenfold. So don't wait till you've got lots of money to give to charity. So, but it really is the best feeling when you're giving to other people. And so your message and the go-giver's message just, just really hits home that it's, it's, it's really about forgetting who you are, leaving yourself completely out of the, the equation, just like Terry said, see? Terry had the whole point. So just go and re-listen to what Terry said. But yeah, I love giving, makes me feel uh, so good. If you want that feeling, just go out and do it. Thank you. Let's give Mike Shine a round of applause. We've had a powerful week. We've got an even more powerful week ahead. Next week's lesson, Wealth Principle 16, is develop a fixity of your purpose. Develop a fixity of your purpose. The book of the week will be Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Hands to Cam if you've already read it. Excellent, excellent. Develop a fixity of purpose is a powerful principle, especially coming from the leverage of the law of reciprocity. Each one of these principles builds on each other, building your perfect ideal business, getting you to the next level. And by the way, speaking of next week and this wealth principle, I will be teaching it from Orlando while we'll be at Mission of Millions with all of our attendees. Let's give a round of applause for everybody who signed up to be at the destination event, Mission of Millions. These men and women will be changing themselves entirely, coming out with a bigger purpose, with a business that supports their purpose, a true mission to build millions. The design came from something I learned from T. Harv Eker when I went through all of his training programs. He had a course called Mission of Millions, and I decided that this course was so powerful. It was so impactful on my life personally that it would be unethical not to share it with other people. Hence the cam, if you recognize it's valuable to teach the things that change your life, absolutely. So for everybody who's gonna be at Mission of Millions with us, we've got a lot of surprises for you. We've got a lot of experiences for you. I can promise you two things. One, it will be extremely uncomfortable. And two, the pictures will be amazing. You'll have a lot to share when you come back. You'll have a business, you'll have a purpose. Many of you already have a purpose. We're just gonna shine it up real nice. We're just going to cut the diamond a little bit, make the edges a little gleamier, make sure they shine the right way so that other people can recognize your passion, your mission, your purpose. We're going to be diving deep and it's going to be a very powerful event. If you missed this one, don't worry. Darina has another one planned towards the end of the year, but Mission of Millions is going to be very exciting. So we'll be recording live from Orlando, from the Mission of Millions event. So for all the attendees who are thinking, wait, Saturday is the 52 Weeks to Wealth. 
how am I going to get the 52 weeks of wealth for an event? I will never stop doing this event. We'll always make sure that it's done. And fortunately, many of our coaches will actually be there with us. We'll have Mike Shine. We'll have Terry Wager. We're going to have uh, Christine McGinley will be there. Mitch Jorsky, Darina, and some of our new up and coming coaches will be there as well. Uh, Doug McGurk will be running the events. So if you've ever heard about Doug's time with Tony Robbins, he Doug learned all of the experiences that Tony Robbins does and he will be delivering some really, really powerful life-changing experiences, physical experiences that will bring you to a place of fear. That's the point. And then break through. He calls them breakthroughs. Uh, Doug, actually, since we're talking about it, you want to run a quick overview of what they might experience? Well, brain surgery. It's brain surgery. We're going to rewire your brains. We're going to get the neurons firing and then uh, create new neural pathways because uh, it's the, the challenge with humans is that we're oftentimes too smart for our own good. So what this experience does is it bypasses your intellect and goes right to experience. And then it goes back to your intellect and goes, what the hell's wrong with you? What were you thinking? Um, so this is uh, designed. And by the way, we're not really telling you exactly what we're doing on Poipus because. So I'll tell you what we're not doing. We're not doing a firewalk this time. So. But the, the reason why I'm just sharing with you the have any of you done a firewalk before anyone? OK, only a couple. Um, there's power in when your brain starts walking up to those, you know, 1800 degree coals and you're looking down at them in your bare feet and your brain starts going, no, what the F are you thinking? And then when you do it and you're. And now, by the way, you're not always unscathed. I will say this. You could sometimes get your little hot spots. You could get that. And but that's like business, right? You don't die. You don't your feet don't burn off. But like business and other areas of life, if you're not willing to get vulnerable, you're not going to necessarily your level of success is in direct proportion to your amount of vulnerability you're willing to put yourself in, you know, no risk, no reward, no pain, no gain. So when we do our yeah, Charles, OK, yeah, cool moss when 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 you and I engage in a business, in a relationship, in anything that makes us a little uncomfortable, we have to look at where that's coming from and how we can bypass it or live through it or embrace it or all of these different ways that you're going to learn that works best for you to align with that so that you can use that as energy to get you to your next best level. Let's give Doug McGurk a round of applause. We appreciate that he's going to be at this event with us doing all of our experiences. It's going to be very powerful. So we will be recording live. We'll make sure that the Zoom is operating. I have, I will make no promises on the sound quality. It will probably sound a lot like a live event. Is that okay? <clears throat> Excellent. I appreciate each and every one of you and your understanding. I'm expecting it to be a very powerful week for each and every one of you. I want you to walk away with this powerful exercise that we talked about earlier, where you go and think and reach out to the right people, reach out, do the five steps, make sure in the next 30 minutes, you take some action. That's the easiest way to make sure that you're taking action is leverage these videos as a motivation, as an inspiration, and then take action right after the video. Hands to the camera if I got that commitment from you. Absolutely. And if you want to take it to the next level, do a live video right afterwards, right after this call ends, just teach one of the principles you learned from today's lesson, the law of reciprocity. Cheers to your success when you have a choice. Always work with the best, the best, the best. Work with the best. Yes, yes, yes.